What's up? It's Bradford, and welcome to Cook Optics TV. Well, let's start with the practicals. Well, that's the wonderful thing about the, the, the technology that we're using, you know, whether it be film that's, you can now shoot a 500 ASA and very, very little grain. With the speed of our lenses, you can actually now, you can shoot, you can get a lot with very little. You watch the blocking of a scene, um, you know, you see where things are happening, and then you and the production designer, art director, set deck, we decide, okay, let's, let's put a practical here, let's put a practical here, let's put a practical here. And, you know, because of the other scenes in the film that have the same sort of tenor, you accept the fact that if the person is looking at the lamp, they'll be front lit, and if I want to move around the person 360 degrees, it's okay that they're completely backlit because we've seen where the source is coming from. And I've been really blessed because I've been able to shoot films in that way where filmmakers aren't worried when I come around from another angle, if they're completely in silhouette with a little bit of edge, they still feel like we're delivering, we're giving the audience what they need in terms of communicating whatever needs to be communicated at the moment. And it gives it a lot of visual texture. And so, you know, between film or, you know, with our incredible digital cameras that are out now, we can do that more seamlessly. We can do that without a lot of lighting setups, you know, without a lot of okay, we're looking this direction, all right, we gotta bring these lights in, we turn around, we gotta bring in some new lights. No, the lights are all there, we're just turning stuff off, you know. Or we, you know. Um, so that's, that's generally like the blessing of being able to use practicals is that, listen, as soon as you show the audience where the light's coming from, as soon as you tell yourself where the light's coming from, then you can go, you can jump around and take all types of liberties. And the more you jump around in those environments, for me, is the more beautiful because then you start to have a scene that's got, you tell a story through lighting texture, the use of light and shadow. And then sometimes, you know, that doesn't always work out, right? Sometimes it's, you don't have enough, and so you need to bring in other sources. So, for instance, in something like Ain't Nobody Saints in Selma, what we did was we asked the art department, you have one lamp on set that looks this way, and it's got a shade on it, and that shade is a little bit more oxidized than this shade over here, so it's not pure white. So by the time we put this bulb in it, this 213, and we dim it down, it's all super, super warm. The shade itself adds another layer of warmth. And the first thing you say is, can you find another shade, this color, or can you art, can you art direct a shade to be this color? Why, why? Well, we want to make another light on a C-stand with a little pigeon plate. We're going to take that lamp, strap it down to the stand. Around that light, we put foam core, we create a box around it, and in the front, in one wall, one of the walls, we put the top three sides, and the fourth wall is completely open. And that's where you get the shade bouncing light back into the soft white box that you can then either slide some diffusion in front of and then you can just walk that little source in it's got the same color temperature it's got the same it's coming from the same source so it's got the same energy you're still burning tungsten filament you know you're not bringing in an hmi and gelling it and trying to create a book light and then before you know you've taken up four feet of the room you don't have to do that anymore you can actually take take up as much space as the light itself in order to carry on the lighting idea so that's that's all props to Christian Epps, my gaffer on both Ain't the Body Saints and Selma, who also did many films that we all love and adore. That's our collaboration. Our collaboration is like small footprint, small footprint. If, it's in, if we're inside the house shooting, small footprint now. In our daytime interior scenes, we've got our way of doing it. We love 12 light maxis through full blue, through full grid. And then usually we've got something in, in front of the window as well. So. Um, and that's very much direct. That's not balanced. That's like pushing hard tungsten light, fully corrected through layers and layers of diffusion. Um, now, you know, that also presents its own problems because you get multiple shadows sometimes. But then when you're doing that, you can also just fly another frame in some, sometimes in front of a diffusion to soften those shadows. But the quality of the light, after we looked at HMIs, after we looked at fluorescent, after we looked at all the, you know, the, these are, you know, during summer there wasn't much access to LEDs. Um, there was very little. Um, Ain't the body science was almost unheard of. I mean, there were the few few sources around, but they weren't that good. Um, so that that twelve light maxi through the window, the quality of the light is where you say to yourself, now I feel like I'm looking at daylight. I can't shoot the scene. I can't shoot in the room for the next twelve hours without lighting it because the sun's gonna go down. So I gotta light it from day one, from from the first hour, and keep that consistent so I can move around the room as I would want to. Push through the windows. Have any lights in the room. Generally, our rule is, you know, any wall you don't see, put black on it. So first thing I do when I go in a room is I black the ceiling. First thing I do, black the ceiling. That's going to give you better shape. 
Like, you know, it's always not always nice to have all this return on the face. I like stuff to be a little bit more, have a little bit more attitude, um, even though it's soft, you know. And then, you know, if it's blacking the floor or blacking a wall, you don't see, you could just start to be able to shape the light um, much more. So, yeah, that's sort of like, how we use practicals, you know? We actually build, we, we look at what it is we like and we try to mimic that and create those sources with those actual lights. Um, and, and, you know, put them on stands, you can lower them, you can bring them in, you can arm it in, you can do whatever you want. We did a lot of that. We did a lot of that on Summer and Ink and Body Saints. Mm -hmm.